Moshi Moshi my gamers and welcome back to Genshi Impact. On certain public holidays, a young girl with amazing feelers and human face can sometimes be spun upon a street of the court of Fontaine. She is none other than the herd nurse of the fortress of Melopede can come to enjoy her vacation. But why does she have such an appearance? Though nearly every Fontaine has her own daily and it's still a matter of speculation with no consensual reach. But few knows that the answer to this question is closely tied to the matter that lies centuries in the past. And is one of the very few memories that brings a smile to her two lips. However, this part of her past has been buried in her heart for way too long, becoming but a beautiful story. Should you be willing to be your friend, she relates that to story to you. Today we're doing the sea string story quest. My goodness, people are gathering around here for some reason. Oh, we're as well as something. Before we do that, let's do this first. I made me a doctor, but I will put this lobo up your ass. E ability. Ooh. No, hold charge attack. Attack. Damn, it's like a shape part, okay. What's your alt, my little? What the hell? Oh my god! It's like stepped up the upper the ass! That is very scary for a doctor! You wanna get jogged? Yeah. Let me do a base it. Was that a pill? Oh shit. <laughs> that must be very poisonous if you ask me. No! Oh, click. Really disturb me? Don't you disturb me! Okay, you can't even blow because you're in there. But that one, ooh. Oh, <laughs> get torture, bitch. Okay, now let's continue what we're doing before. Now, people are getting around here for some reason. This ship looks popular today. Wonder what the occasion is. Did you see shit? I could be losing. Mm, butterfly do cosmetics now on sale. Huh, looks like it. Oh, sea dreams here too. <gasps> The doctor! Hey there, Sea Dream! <laughs> What's all the chances? Hello there, Traveler and Paimon. I hope you're keeping yourselves fit and healthy. Uh, you should ask Paimon that question. You bet we are! So anyway, what are you doing here, Sea Dream? The Duke insists I take regular vacations in the Court of Fontaine. This one just so happened to coincide with a promotion for a new skincare product, so I came over to take a look. I like to keep up with the latest industry developments when I can to help me with my magazine articles. Wait, you write for a magazine? Which one? It's called Beauté's en Fleur, and it's run by the Fontaine Beauty Association. I've done lots of articles about skincare for them, using the pen name Romaritime Flower. Oh, wow! You're Romaritime Flower? If Paimon's not mistaken, you're one of the leading figures in the Fontaine Beauty Association! Since when did you start reading beauty mags? <laughs> Max. What, what's so weird about that? Everyone loves beauty! Um, <laughs> everyone. I really like this role. The staff at cosmetic shops are always so polite. And as long as I wear a big smile on my face, I always get the best customer service. Well, they sure don't want to make an enemy of the Romaritime Flower! How did you become a leader in the Beauty Association? Obviously, it's because of Sea Dream's love for beauty! Still a leader of the Beauty Association? That's incredible! The truth is, I study this field because I cherish my own appearance. It has nothing to do with being beautiful or not. Oh, the words of a master beautician defy comprehension! Oh, wait, you're saying that natural beauty is the highest form of beauty, right? Not really. Actually, Melusian aesthetics are very different from human ones. We don't view humans based on their appearance. If I had to describe our approach, I'd say it's based on cuteness. Aw, uh, like that? Aw, oh, look at that. Oh! Really? Yeah, Paimon. Yep. Still... I really value my current appearance, and in the process of taking care of it, I've ended up learning quite a lot about skincare and stuff. It turns out, my knowledge and experience is pretty popular with beauty product lovers. It came as a big surprise to me, though. Oh, Paimon gets it now. But speaking of your appearance, how come you look human anyway? Are you, like, only half melazine? 
No, Paimon. Don't go there. Sorry, sorry. That was probably really offensive, wasn't it? Yeah, don't go there. No, I don't mind. I'm not mixed, though. I made a decision to turn myself into this form a very long time ago. Interesting. If you're interested, I could tell you the story. A shape-shifting story? Oh, heck yeah, of course we're interested. Uh, you didn't say the line, Paimon! <clears throat> Once upon a time... Okay, tell us the story. Long ago, humans rejected Melazines. We know this already. And Melazines feared humans. There was one Melazine who became fascinated with human medicine, but no human wanted her help. And there was one girl who liked Melazines, so no humans would make friends with her. Aw, that's adorable. So, the Melazine became the girl's friend, and the girl became the Melazine's patient. Mm hmm Your checkup's all done. You're still in perfect health. <sighs> Thank you, Dr. Melazine. <laughs> Aw, in this game, with this. a doctor and patient, a friendship was born. Then, one day, the girl fell ill. The Melazine was the only doctor to arrive on time, but the adult sent her away. Scram! Melazines can't be trusted! <sighs> Come on! Just because I'm not human. That is so shit! I can't save my best friend. In desperation, the Melazine approached the frightening witch. She begged and begged until she got a reply. If you take this potion, Concocted of sin. Who's one of the human Are those one of the witches? And grow human Do I legs. think it is? But then you will lose everything that attracted this friend of yours to you in the first place. Can you accept that? The Melazine Who? did not have What witch is that? Go one of the six. Is that what it's called? I kinda of forgot what it is. On a rainy night, a little doctor knocked on the girl's door. The doctor wore a hood and raincoat, maybe to protect her from the rain, but maybe also to hide a secret. The little doctor held the girl's hand and treated her illness, just as she had so many times before. Dawn came, and the little girl's condition improved. But the little doctor was long gone. For she knew her friend would never recognize her again. Aww. And so, since then, I've lived my life in human form. Most people who know me just think I was born this way. Ooh, a witch? A potion? Why does this sound like a fairy tale? Not really. Trust me, it's a true story. Must be the way you told it then. It just sounds so... Uh... You're an uh, incredible kind of person, Sijuin. Yeah, not every Melazine would take human form to save their human friend. That must have been a huge decision. Treating patients is a doctor's duty. We must always find a way, even when the going gets tough. Ugh. It's so crazy that they turned you away just because you were a Melazine! Especially when their daughter was so sick! Well... Sometimes appearance can be a real barrier. But that was a long time ago. I like how I look now, anyway. I'm on too! You're super cute this way! Attention customers! Thank you all for waiting. Now, on behalf of our skincare partner, I'm delighted to announce that our exciting new product is now officially on sale! Well, there we go! Let's have a look, shall we? Paimon, if you want to buy any skincare products, I'll be happy to give you some suggestions. Really? Personal advice right from a leader of the Fontaine Beauty Association? What an honor! Allow me to introduce our newest skin lotion, Butterfly Dew. I'm sure many of you have already read about this product's trials in the newspapers. To say that it improves skin quality is an understatement. 
This product gets its name from the way it transforms your skin and makes it glow anew, like a butterfly emerging from its chrysalis and spreading its wings for the first time. We are thrilled to have the inventor of this fantastic product with us here today. Please welcome Mr. Rawat, a researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute. Now, without further ado, I'll hand over to Mr. Rawat to tell you all about what Butterfly Do can do for you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Rawat, and I developed Butterfly Do. Wow. What a looker. Hey, oh! What is that face you're making? He's a researcher? Well, he's really challenging the stereotype. <laughs> it seems that everyone is surprised by my entrance. Or, should I say, my appearance. I'm well aware that researchers are generally better known for their brains than their dashing good looks. In that regard, I do believe I break the mold somewhat. Of course, appearance is a skin-deep way of defining a person. And yet, one's appearance can be a very real set of shackles, holding a person back in their life. It can rob a young person of their self-confidence when applying for a job, dissuade a young lady from approaching the one she loves, our actions are at the mercy of our appearance, and we slowly become the very person that the outside world sees us as. Mm. But what if I told you that those shackles can be broken? If our appearance prevents us from changing, then let us first change our appearance itself. Wash away moles, birthmarks, and wrinkles, and they can no longer rob us of our confidence. Replace them with luster and radiance, and we shall never hang our heads and shake. He said luster. Like what? Lust? That is us? why Butterfly what? exists. Its mission is to allow us to shed our pupae, undergo a complete metamorphosis, and embrace a new life. Well, whether it actually works or not, after that speech, Paimon's already sold. <laughs> Mr. Rawat, could I ask if you've used this product yourself? Of course. I tried it many times while I was testing it. You can consider me a product ambassador. Wow, then it's sure to work. Still, I don't expect to convince you just by blowing my own trumpet. So, could I get a volunteer from the audience to try it out? Oh, Paimon? Oh, <laughs> oh my god, Paimon? Nah, they're, they're probably gonna pick someone else's watch. Hmm? Oh! Of course! Yes, yeah, sorry, Paimon, you're out. Ah, oh, what an honor! It appears we have a giant of the Fontaine Beauty Association here with us. In that case, Miss Sijuin. Could we seek your most expert opinion on this product? Um, sure. Oh, is that Romaritime Flower? They say she's the pickiest user of skincare products in all of Fontaine. Here you go. Hmm. Well, it's very kind to the skin, and the absorption rate is high. Even for Fontaine, this is a first-rate product. Wow, now that's high praise. I'll take one. Uh, Any discounts? All right. Well, all that remains for me to say is Butterfly Do is now on sale. Okay. The internet shopping speed probably dismissed the stocks. Think we should buy a bottle too? Uh, are you paying it for yourself? <sighs> of course you bring up Mora. Fine, Paimon will pay out of her own pocket and even share it with you. There, does that sound fair? And if you're okay. worried about whether it's the right <laughs> product for you, well, luckily for us, Sea Dream's here, so we can get an expert consultation. Okay, Act 1, The Warmth of Lies. Oh, is there something behind those potions that we don't know about? I hope not, but I just know something bad could happen during this one. Let's talk to Sea Dream. It's an honor to receive such high praise from you. To be honest, I was also hoping you might be able to point out some flaws in the product so I can keep improving it. With most skincare products, the pros and cons only become apparent with long-term use. But yet, this one has instant benefits. Improving skin quality without any obvious side effects. It's one of a kind. Don't worry though, I plan to keep using it. And I'll publish regular reviews in Botes en Fleur. You can read my thoughts there. All you need to do is subscribe. Like and subscribe? Like me? Oh, I was hoping for a more casual conversation, but you are a beauty association leader after all. I understand if you want to keep this professional. Sea Dream? Oh, um, <laughs> excuse us, Miss Beauty Expert. But do you think this product is a good choice for me and him? Hmm? Wait. 
Are you the renowned traveler? Yeah. That's right. And by his side, the equally famous Paimon. Your food. <laughs> well, I don't normally handle customer questions personally, but since it's the traveler asking, allow me to make an exception. Butterfly Dew is made for all skin types, so no matter who you are, you can rest assured that it will be kind to your skin. If anything, it might be marginally more effective on Fontanian's skin, but other than that, it works the same on everyone. Why would it work better on Fontanian? Um, in the interests of protecting my trade secrets, I'm afraid I can't answer that, Miss Paimon. Uh, all right then. How about a friend discount? Save yourself the trouble. I'd be greatly honored to have both of you use my product. Here, take two bottles for free. Free? Hey, Paimon's private fund survives! Oh, of course. What's the cash? Is this a publicity stunt? <laughs> I can see why you might think that, but please don't misunderstand. This gift is simply a token of my esteem. There's no business motivation behind it. To me, finding new customers for Butterfly Dew is about meeting kindred spirits, fellow admirers of physical beauty. I consider it a labor of love. Admirers of physical beauty? Eesh, that's embarrassing to say out loud. It sounds so shallow. It's nothing to be ashamed of, Miss Paimon. Most people claim to desire inner virtue, but it's still physical appearance that turns their heads. This is a fact of life. It's only natural for people to desire to become beautiful. And that's exactly what inspired me to choose this research direction in the first place. You're right. Everyone loves beauty, don't they? Ah, look at the time. My apologies, but I have other things to attend to. I'll leave you with these two bottles of Butterfly Dew, and I look forward to seeing you again. Paimon, I'd say there's no need for you and the Traveler to use this product for now. Uh, why? Is there a problem with it? The quality is fine. I just think there's room for improvement. I think I could add some ingredients to the mix to make it more effective. Really? Then... Why didn't you tell Rewat about that? Researchers are a very special breed of human. You can point out their flaws to their face and they won't mind very much. But if you tell them that someone else could do a better job, ooh, now that'll make them really upset. If I'd mentioned it, he probably wouldn't have given you those two bottles for free. Ah, huh, fair enough, that makes sense. If you're interested in the more effective version, I can write up a list of ingredients for you just come get me once you've gathered them. When you say more effective, you mean it'll make Paimon even prettier? Ooh, how can we say no? A prettier Paimon? As for what me, the fuck? It's probably time I got back to the Fortress of Maripede. I mustn't leave the infirmary unattended for too long. Alright, see you there then! I <sighs> guess we're going down there first. So the ingredients happens to be... Just a minute, traveler! The ingredients for Sea Dream should be nearby! Yeah, like... Kill that thief us? I mean, he yeah, must just kill him off. Hey! Are you? You're not. Oh shit, the levels. Why are the higher level? Holy shit, what happened? I didn't play Gidget in a while, but what the fuck? It's because of the new update, they're going to higher levels now? Jesus, I don't want that. But the bills for no kills? Okay, for now. I don't mind it actually. I don't care about this will take us down. Kill the spotlight. A duck! Hello! Let's go, let's go, let's go. That's one again down, there's one underwater. Let's go, Fermine. Okay, swim down. Does this involve killing your enemies underwater? It probably does. I don't know. Let's, let's go. Like swimming in the water, let us go. Ooh, you know what? Why not? For the 1440 by seconds, sure, why not? Whee! Ooh. Okay, one one for me. It's like, <laughs> like, ooh, chess. There's a lot of treasure here. Yes, yes, for me. Okay, can I go down? No, we swim underwater like you're in Subnautica. This probably involves killing. I could be one of the. Yes, it does. Gotta collect this. No, no. Excuse me! You too? I don't need you too. I just need to kill this guy off. Hey! What up? Yeah, attack me. Go ahead. Boom! Yeah, you almost dead. And boom! Oh, and boom! Great! 
everything. Let's head to the Fortress of Meripede. I'm out of here. <gasps> Woo! It's been so long since I last been here. I remember playing the story quest with the storage of Melody for the Archon Fountain one. Like, I'll get so lost playing this quest too. Because it's a little confusing when you're moving where you're supposed to go or whatnot. No, see, Shreen. <gasps> is that. Whoa, the infirmary is packed. I died so far from for saying that, mind. That's Wesley. Please, you have to believe me. I saw it with my own eyes last night. Another me. He looked exactly like me. Got it? Okay. I've written down everything you told me. Now, I have a few tests to run. Take a deep breath, and don't worry. It's nothing to be nervous about. First, which finger am I holding up? Um, the fuck you? Your index finger, but I'm telling you, my mental state is fine. I'm not crazy. Very good. Now, on to the next. Hey there! Your grace, it's been a while, huh? Just call it wisely. Ah, it's you two. Indeed it has. I would offer you some tea, but I'm afraid the timing is unfortunate. Duty calls. No worries. Actually, we were looking for Seedween. Do you, uh, know what all of this is about? This inmate came running to the guards in a panic, claiming to have seen his exact doppelganger. A doppelganger? Doesn't that just mean someone else kind of looks like him? And that's what I thought when the report first reached my desk. But we've inspected our records. No one even vaguely resembles him. Considering how certain he is of what he saw, I could only surmise that he's having some mental issues. So I brought him for a medical evaluation. All right, very good. Take a sip of water and rest for a bit. Evaluation complete. I couldn't find any symptoms pointing to a physical condition. I see. So do you still believe there's more likely to be an issue with his mind than his body? I have to assume so for now. Psychological issues are more difficult to detect. At this stage, we can at least confirm that he is in command of his cognitive faculties. The rumor mill will go crazy if word of this gets out. Guards, take him to the ward for a period of observation. The Mara Chaussee Phantom has requested my cooperation on a case, otherwise I'd deal with this myself. Sorry for the trouble, head nurse, but I'll have to leave this to you. No problem, Your Grace. I'll add him to my observation list. By the way, we have a couple of guests here who have made the trip just to see you. I imagine it must be important. You probably won't need to add them to your observation list, though. Oh, Traveler! Paimon, it's you! Hey there, Sea Dream! It's actually not that important, but... I'll be in my office if you desperately need me. Goodbye for now. Okay, bye-bye! So, uh, Sea Dream... Would you mind waiting for just a moment? I have another patient to see. Uh, just find an empty bed and take a seat. I won't be long. Oh, sure! Sijuin, we've brought him. And he seems to have taken a turn for the worse again. Okay, don't panic. Let's start by sitting him down here. Paimon had no idea how busy it can get for Sijuin. Maybe now's not the time to ask for her help with skincare. Patient Paimon, she'll help us. We just need to wait. Good point. Besides, it might actually be interesting to observe her at work. Well, this could hurt, so I suggest you take a deep breath first. Did his face melt? What happened to him? Can we see it? It's anyone's guess. His face melted off shortly after arriving at the fortress. But since he's a serious offender, he can't be allowed out for medical treatment. Best we can do for now is ask the head nurse to give him something to manage the symptoms. Oh, this is gonna be awkward. We still need to bring him to the Mara Chose Phantom for questioning. What if he scares them half to death? Will that be our fault? The Mara Chose Phantom? Does this have something to do with the case Risley's dealing with? Yep, it was Maybe a huge it's a product case. we're using. We bagged a few dozen crooks in one fell swoop. And this guy's the baddest apple of the bunch. He harmed countless people. And now, it looks like it's all finally catching up with him. You done gawking? Not yet. I need to check the severity of your ulcers to decide the right dosage. <sighs> Don't worry. We Melazines have a very different sense of aesthetics from humans. To me, he just looked like a little kitty with slightly scruffy fur, but still just as cute. Don't patronize me. Do I look like a kid to you? Just give me the meds and let me out of here. I already missed my cell. Hey, lose the attitude. You dare talk back to our head nurse like that again? Your days are numbered. Oh, it's fine. Okay, I'm going to apply the medication now. 
Tell me if it hurts, all right? Look how nice Seedream's being. And he still talks to her like that? What a nasty piece of work. Can I leave now? Wow, not a peep. Oh, what a brave little guy. Thank you, Sijuin. And I apologize for the trouble. Uh, so, Traveler, Paimon, did you bring the ingredients? Uh, we did, but we don't want to interfere or anything. You're busy saving lives here. Oh, don't be silly. I agreed to it, didn't I? Just hand me the ingredients, and I'll make some time to whip it into the improved version for you. Take a rest here if you want. Or, if you're not tired, I hear they're holding a new pancreation tournament in the administration area. Um, or alternatively, is there anything we could help you with, Seedwing? Take it as a token of our gratitude. That's right! Let us help you out! It's the least we could do! Hmm, good point. Kind-hearted humans start to develop guilt if they accept free help from others. Mm, don't worry, I'll take a look at my schedule. I'm sure I can find something to treat this condition. I gotta warn you though, it'll be tiring work. So I suggest you take a break first, then come back and see me when you're ready. Uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Actually, imagine a therapy session with CJ would be kind of funny. What do you want to talk about, Vinny? I'm a queer. Am I a fat ass for being sweets? I think I'm horny for father. <laughs> I just seriously said that? Okay, Seedwing, we're here. Let's get started. We're ready, Seedwing. What's our first mission? <laughs> I found the perfect job for the traveler. First, I'd like you to lie down in this bed. What? Okay. What's next? Uh, what for? I'm just chilling now. I need you to pretend to be sick. What? Uh, <laughs> um. Oh, is it that difficult? I thought you did a pretty good job last time. Oh, so you knew. I sure did. He was way more interesting than the usual malingering inmates. And you played along very well, Paimon. I observed you two for quite a while after that. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> but why do you need us to do it again now? Uh, no time to explain. My next patient will be here any second. Well, please, just do as I say. You can, uh... Pretend like you've got a nasty headache and throw in some dry heaving for good measure. Like, <laughs> but this for a reason, she knows something's off. <coughs> hey, Doc, it's me. I'm only here because my mom won't stop pestering me about it. <sighs> So annoying. Well, your mother has enough on her plate with a busy job. Well, the last thing she needs is to worry about you being sick as well. I know, I know. I shouldn't treat the place like a playground. I shouldn't go swimming in the lower levels where we join up with the sea, because it'll give me a cold and distract her from her work. I thought I'd be able to have some fun here at the fortress for a few days, but it's always, don't do this, and don't do that. All right, sit yourself down and I'll take your temperature. Hmm. Your fever still hasn't gone down. Well, here's your medicine. One cup for starters, and we'll see if it helps. But Doc, it's so bitter. Do I really have to drink it? I mean, I'll be fine, right? I've got an uncle who caught a cold. His fever went away on its own after a couple days. Can't you just write me a note saying I'm on the mend? I just need something to keep my mom off my case. Hmm. I sure can. You're a very brave boy, after all. Huh? Brave? What makes you say that? Well, if you want to rely on your own immune system to clear up your fever, then you'll have to tough it out like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm not fine. My sister's not miss. My sister is missing. Alright. <laughs> Paimon. Paimon, I did out something. Hang in there, traveler. Are you gonna puke? Paimon can get you a paper bag. <laughs> Good acting. Tough enough to get through the nausea and dizziness caused by the high fever, you'll be right as rain after just a few days' rest. And if I'm not tough enough, you'll get worse. <gasps> hey, hey, wake up! Wake up! 
What was that? <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm dead. Put it this way. At least you'll never have to see the doctor again, right? I, uh, I think maybe I'll take that medicine after all, if that's okay. Oh, of course. Here, it's still warm. Uh, uh, it's so bitter. <laughs> okay, shut the fuck up, Luke. All done. Great job, you two. That kid really doesn't know what's good for him. His mother's a guard here. She's been working back-to-back -back shifts lately. But unfortunately, his father's away on a business trip right now. She had no choice but to bring her son here for the time being. He was quite happy at first. He seemed to think that the Fortress of Meripede would be all fun and games. So you made us put on that act just to scare a kid into taking his medicine? That's a pretty sneaky trick. That's smart like though. There's a whole side to siege we never knew about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a technique I learned from my teacher. Oh, you had a teacher? Was she a Melazine doctor too? Mm. <laughs> she was human. She passed away a long time ago. Oh, sorry. No, oh, it's fine. I really liked my teacher, so it's always nice when I get to talk about her with other people. She was a traveling doctor. And since she didn't have a clinic, she'd go out and visit her patients wherever they were. Dealing with the badly behaved ones was her specialty. <laughs> she used to say, Ahem. If you can scare the little brats into taking their medicine, you won't have to hear them wailing and screeching when their condition gets worse. Ooh, look at the face she makes. Huh, she sounds like a pretty strict teacher. Oh, strict? Well, that's not how my teacher saw it. She thought of herself as terrifying to kids. Strange way for a doctor to describe themselves. Now Paimon's curious to know what she looked like. Uh, oh, as it happens, I actually have a picture of her. Really? Oh, it's like a normal NPC, of course. Oh! Wow, yeah, okay, that'll terrify the kids. Yep. All the children she treated thought she was a witch. Why does it almost sound like you're envious of her? Oh, because I am. If she was here, all the children would take their medicine without any need for tricks. A doctor who looks like a witch. True, they wouldn't dare try anything funny with her around. Oh. Me, on the other hand, it's hopeless. Children aren't afraid of me at all. That's actually a good thing, you know? Oh, my next patient should be arriving now. Would you mind lending me a hand again? Sure thing! On to the next mission! Hell right. It's also of so patient so I just fight down with the walk of the day. Ah, is it night time already? That flew by. You really have a busy job, Seedween. Well, thanks to you two, it was much easier today. <laughs> Glad we could help. Should we get some rest? It's getting pretty late. Oh, uh, there is one last thing. I have to keep it confidential, so I usually leave it till after everyone's clocked out. Confidential? Are you sure you can tell us? Well, it's fine. You're not living here anymore, so it's okay if you know. All it is, is I have to prepare some ingredients to make healthy meals with. Wait, you mean those healthy meals? The ones that magically appear on the third day. <sighs> My patients refuse to eat any healthy meals I prepare in front of them. So I have to prep the ingredients in secret, then let the chef at the coupon cafeteria handle the rest. Considering even the chef's version makes people uneasy, it really makes you wonder what's in it. You want to find out? I can teach you how to make it. That way, if you ever suffer from exhaustion on your future travels, you can prepare a healthy meal for yourself. It's really good for you, you know. Um, sure? Guess we can help out one more time. There's nothing wrong with eating healthy on the side of your food and now, now and then. The ingredients are ready. Uh, now, put them on the table and add them in the order I tell you. First, we add mm. this special slime condensate. Stir it thoroughly, then pour it in. Oh, see that? It adds elasticity. It looks just like tasty jelly, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, yeah! Yeah, it really does! Until you remember it's slime condensate. Next up, xenochromatic crystals. If you want to crush them up into a fine powder, like powdered sugar. Wait, are those from Font of Our Aberrants? Are you I'm sure on, my god. Finally, we'll need some high protein meat. 
frogs are an excellent choice. What? Uh, you just need to clean their innards, and then you're left with some lovely tender meat. This th smells it. <laughs> oh, frogs. Uh. I know, Paimon. Mm -hmm. And we're done. All that's left now is to pack them into lunch boxes and hand them to Walsy. Yesterday in the production zone, I noticed an inmate who's been working for two days straight. That means it's a healthy meal for him tomorrow. Sea Dream really does have the inmate's best interests at heart. Going down. Whee! Okay. Here you go, this is a disgusting piece of shit. Ah, head nurse. <laughs> Got some extras for me? Just the one today. The serial number's on the lid. Sounds good. I'll make sure it gets delivered. Sounds like they're talking in code. Thanks for your help. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I only wish I could do more. You work so hard for all our sakes. I'd happily lose a little sleep if it meant helping you out. Uh, that won't do. If you reduce your sleeping hours any further, your health will start to suffer. Hmm, all right. Nurse's orders. I'll do as I'm told. But you take care of yourself, too. Done with work for today. Thanks for helping out, you two. Seems like the guards and staff here have a lot of respect for you, Sea Dream. In just one day of helping you with your work, it feels like we've done a lot for the fortress. Uh, head nurse, please wait. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you this late at night, but uh, I think you'll agree this is urgent. Okay, just relax and catch your breath. What's the matter? The guard at the observation ward, Odalon, he told me to pass on a message to you. Uh, one of the inmates there, the guy suffering from possible hallucinations, well, he seems to have made a sudden recovery, and now he wants to apply for permission to leave the ward. Ah, uh, already? <sighs> you were right to tell me. I'll have to examine him and make sure he's well before we discharge him. Looks like we've got one job as medical assistants left. We'll come with you. Oh, Lord. So, this is the observation room? Ah. Oh, okay. See how this goes. Ah, head nurse, you're finally here. I'm so sorry for all the trouble I've caused you, but I believe I've now made a full recovery. After giving it some thought, I'm sure that I was probably just seeing things. It's stress-related, I imagine. I'd been working long hours, so I definitely wasn't in the best state of mind. I totally understand. Still, I have to give you an examination before I can discharge you. Okay? So, take a deep breath and don't be nervous. It'll be the exact same procedure as we did this morning. But we can start whenever you're ready. Uh, again, so sorry. I was in such a state this morning, I barely recall anything. Would you mind taking me through it again? Not at all. It's a lot to remember. First up, we have a little cognitive test. Just concentrate and you'll be fine. To start with, which finger am I holding up? Am I still doing this? What am I holding up? Your pinky. <laughs> pinky. Under this guidance, Eric finally completes a full all series right. of tests. All indicators seem normal. So it was a stress-induced hallucination after all? Well, we've certainly had previous cases of mental illness caused by overwork, which is why I carefully observe everyone in the production zone. <sighs> I wonder how I managed to miss the signs this time. Please, head nurse, you shouldn't blame yourself. I'm just still adapting, that's all. I pushed myself too hard, and I guess I couldn't take it. Thanks for looking after me. I'll be as good as new after a good night's sleep. And if you can give me the okay, I know I'll sleep better back in my good old dorm. Hmm. It can be difficult to relax in an unfamiliar environment. All right, then. You can leave the ward. I suggest you take two days off to focus on your recovery. I'll take you off the observation list for now. So, you're officially discharged. Great. I can't thank you enough, head nurse. Mr. Odilon, could you escort him back? Of course. I'm on guard duty in the administrative area tonight, so nothing will go wrong. You have my word. Oh, I... Guess you're finally done for the day now, huh? Yep. Uh, oh, but I still haven't gotten around to making that improved lotion for you yet. Oh, no rush! Seriously, it's super late now. You should go get some rest, too. Well, tomorrow it is, then. Good night, Traveler. Good night, Paimon. Hope you sleep well. Oh, 
Oh, don't you worry. We will. After a productive day of work, we're both gonna sleep like a log. Good night, Sea Dream. Yeah, sleep tight, Sea Dream. See you tomorrow. Yeah, night time. <sighs> I'm a really did sleep like a log. We sleep in here. <laughs> we slip in there, cause why not? Uh, seriously? Oh my god, there's a lot of them here. Oh, how is the infirmary even busier than yesterday? Uh, good morning, Traveler and Paimon. Uh, I have a few people here for a checkup, so you might need to wait for a while. No problem. Anything we can do to help? Uh, there's a bit of a complicated situation here. I'm still getting to the bottom of it myself. You have to believe me. I'm telling the truth. Hmm. Was Lee? You're in a medical facility. Keep it down. Please, listen to me. I'm not Gascon. I'm Ui. You're a horrible liar, you know that? We get all your mugshots with the arrest warrants. It's clear as day that you're Gascon. You mean because of the way I look? I don't know what happened. I just woke up like this. Then you guys dragged me in here for an interrogation. I brought you here to figure out what's going on. If you truly are the victim of an injustice, yelling isn't going to achieve anything. At most, it'll delay your vindication. All right. I get it. This is nuts. Yesterday's interrogations went fine. And now this. Morning, Your Grace. What's going on? Remember the case I mentioned yesterday? The one brought to me by the Mara Chose Phantom? Well, we've been questioning the inmates involved this morning. Every single one of them is claiming mistaken identity. Huh. That's even weirder than what that guy was saying yesterday. The thing is, none of them have been able to provide any evidence whatsoever to support their claims. Questioning them further got us nowhere, so for now, we've brought them to the infirmary. And we thought yesterday was as busy as it got for Seedween. We've compiled their statements. Have a look. Perhaps there's something we missed. Let me see here. Pot on. What's this pot on? I'm honored. I implied you out to see the doctor, but when I woke up, I was in another cell. Unbelievable. Gosson. I'm not Gasson, I'm Hollus. Today should be the founding of my sentence. Should I gone free? What gives? Erin, I'm Eric. Why does stuff like this always happen to me? Now there's no way the least people have gotten square away today. Lazard, my name is Alden. I'm a guide. I think I was attacked. This isn't me at all. Wait. <sighs> Release? Interesting. The inmates they spoke of in their statements appear to all be due for release today. Hmm. I noticed that too. If that's their plan, they're underestimating us a little. Every serious offender claims that there's someone else who just so happens to be due for release today. And they're expecting us to go along with that. All the more reason to be cautious. Lumberzar, check the release list for today and make sure no one gets processed. We're gonna need an excuse though. Mm -hmm. Just say we're out of forms, and that we're furiously printing more as we speak. I'm on it. It's conceivable that our group of serious offenders somehow found a way to switch places with inmates who are about to be released, so they can walk out right under our noses. We did consider that possibility. But I mean, just look at them. They match the warrants, period. How could there have been a switch? Mm, only if they're dead ringers for the inmates due for release, I suppose. I gave you that name list yesterday to assist in your investigation. Did that help? Yes, the inmates' mugshots were attached to the list. The first thing I did was check for lookalikes, and I didn't find any. The only other thing that stands out to me is that their voices sound a little different today. But it's not exactly hard to put on a fake voice. Oh, really? Hmm. What does our head nurse make of all of this? Uh, give me a moment. I think I have a way to confirm whether there's been a switch. I know, it's not time to change your dressing yet, oh, but please bear with me. Huh? Isn't that the guy from yesterday? Uh, this should be Honore. He has very severe facial ulcers, which require an operation in the hospital at the Court of Fontaine. I authorized him to leave the fortress for medical treatment under guarded escort. Yes, like I told you. I'm not Potten. I'm Honore. So there has been a swap. Well, I can see what happened in Potten's case. But how do you explain the other inmates? You're not telling me their souls switched bodies, are you? Mm, I we were no. not sure about that. I believe it was their faces that got switched. The method is a bit like replacing a tooth. 
take the bad tooth out, put a false one in. Hmm. And actually, I think I can prove it to you. Traveler, Paimon, do you remember Eric from the other day? Yeah, sure do. Mm -hmm. Then you can be my witnesses. To start with, please fetch the inmate who claims to be Eric. Yeah, I'll grab him. I gotta read that? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. It's in my... I kind of forgot where you look. Oh, right, the bag. The bag. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's in here somewhere. There he is. Eric, Eric, Eric. Okay, it's Edwin. How do I say the name, though? Not you, not you, not you. You're the one! So, you're Eric? Yes, head nurse. It's me. You do believe me, right? <laughs> I need to do another examination on you. Same procedure as yesterday. Uh, all right. It's the cognition test first, right? So, I need to concentrate. Now, try to recall if you can. The last time we did this test, which finger did I hold up? Uh, I believe it was your index finger. Uh, but that means... Hmm, it wasn't the same person. Huh? So, basically, last night, the Eric who said he saw another him suddenly recovered and applied to leave the observation ward. Seedwing did another test before letting him leave, but that time, she held up her pinky finger. Huh? Uh, I don't know about any tests last night. There was nothing to do in the observation ward, so I went straight to bed. Then I somehow woke up in a high security cell. Hmm. Well, in that case, there is a reasonable explanation for the strange events of the past two days. So, what exactly happened? The gang of serious offenders wanted to break out of prison, so they identified a group of scapegoats. Namely, inmates whose terms were almost up, and planned to switch appearances with them. Last night, when Odilon was on duty, they ambushed him and had one of their groups switch appearances with him using their face-swapping method. That allowed them to avoid scrutiny from the other guards. Then, once all the other inmates were asleep, Odilon spent his night shift carrying out the remainder of their switcheroo plan. However, they made one mistake. Henri changed his appearance to match Eric's earlier than he should have done, and ended up being spotted by the real Eric. Real Eric came to the guards for help, but we didn't know then what we know now. So we put it down to hallucination, and sent him to the observation ward. However, since one of the gang members was posing as a guard, they simply changed real Eric's appearance and had their Eric take his place, muddying the waters even further. Right, because I put Eric on the observation list by then, and no inmates on that list can be processed for departure until I've discharged them. Hence, why the imposters had to pull that little stunt to get fake Eric off the list. Yeah, it all makes sense now! The Duke cracked the case! Well, I can't fault the reasoning. But I'm afraid that we ruled out the possibility of face switching very early on in this process. Criminals altering their facial appearance to commit crimes is nothing new. In fact, one of the explicit duties of the Malazians in the Marashose Phantom is to identify criminals in disguise. We carefully examined all the suspects, and there is no evidence that any means of disguise were used in this case. Huh. Well then, how do we explain all this? So far, it seems more likely that the gang stole documentation belonging to the inmates due for release, and are using that to commit identity fraud. Actually, there is a potion that can completely change someone's appearance. If they use that, even a melazine wouldn't be able to detect it. A shape-shifting potion? Forgive me, head nurse, but this is the first time I'm hearing about it. If such a potion truly existed, it would jeopardize our entire investigative process at the Marachaux Save Phantom. Are you certain of this? Yes, I am. But... Please, trust me in my professional opinion as an experienced clinician. At the same time, without any solid evidence, it's pure speculation. Hmm. If we can round up all the inmates suspected of switching places, then have a little talk with both sides, we might just get our answer. Yep. Let's do that. Okay. Well, it was our negligence that meant we had to come and conduct these post-internment interrogations. And I know it's put you out. We'll do it your way. Your Grace, bad news. I paused the releases like you asked, but we were too late. A bunch of people already got processed two hours ago. I checked the list. 
And sure enough, it's all the people who gave statements. Two hours ago? That's before today's interrogations began. They had this all planned out. So there really was a switch after all. <sighs> they really pulled the wool over our eyes on this one. We should be able to catch up with them if we leave now, right? Not if that potion is real. They can just switch faces again after leaving the fortress. And if the Marachose's Melazines can't even spot them, we wouldn't know where to start searching. Yikes! So we're at a complete dead end! Well, technically there is one more lead we could follow up on. We were only able to arrest this gang thanks to the help of a researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute. I believe his name is Rawat. Oh? Rawat? Isn't that the handsome guy we met at that skincare promotion? Handsome? Uh, maybe from a human point of view. I just remember that he specialized in potions. One of the crimes this gang is charged with is the manufacture and sale of illicit drugs. According to Mr. Rawat, they appear to have stolen technology he developed through his research and used it in their operation. At first, he thought it was a typical case of intellectual property infringement, and he tried to negotiate with them. But once he discovered their criminal operation, he reported them to the authorities. Thanks to his report, we were able to swoop in and arrest them all in one go. What a hero! But that took courage on his part. No doubt. This is worth following up on. As the one who snitched on them, it's highly likely that Rawat will be targeted by the escapees. That aside, since he's negotiated with them in person before, there's a chance he'll have some additional information for us. Understood, Your Grace. My team and I will head to the Fontaine Research Institute right away. In the meantime, please keep an eye on the face switch victims for us. Of course. Um, Miss Morgan, I'd like to come along and help you catch these criminals. Uh, huh? Why is that? Well, I'm the one who discharged the fake Eric last night, so I feel partly responsible. Um, don't say that, head nurse. Your focus was on the inmates' health, and rightly so. We can't ask you to help with arresting criminals. That's our duty. Um, I also have a more personal reason. Potten is a patient of mine, and if I don't get a new batch of medicine to him in time, his condition will get much worse. <sighs> Look... Head nurse, I completely understand where you're coming from. But arresting criminals is dangerous business. And if anything happened to you, none of us can afford to take on that responsibility. I'm here too. Hello. <laughs> Don't worry. I can defend myself just fine. I mean, yeah, vision too. <sighs> you say that. But still. If I may, Miss Morgan. Siegeween is the one who raised the potion hypothesis, and I'm sure she has far more expertise on the topic than your team. My suggestion would be to bring her with you, and if you really are worried for her safety, then... Pam and I are coming along anyway. Ah, there you go, right on cue. Knew I could count on you. Okay. Well, since this plan has the Duke's blessing, far be it from me to refuse. We should head off immediately. Time is of the essence. Yeah, let's go. Oh, well, I'm gonna bail. Like, subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.